हेलो गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग माय ऑडिबल क्लियर अस्सलाम वालेकुम ओ वालेकुम अस्सलाम एनी डाउट फ्रॉम लास्ट क्लास नो सर खालिद नो सर नो डाउट ओके i think we have done error analysis and we have done addition and subtraction of error yes okay sir. next part is multiplication we have input a is equals to a plus minus delta of a and b is b plus minus delta of b and the result obtained while operating these two terms together would be r is equals to r plus minus delta r we have to just multiply these two terms to find the result related to that particular term so r equals to a times b on putting their values r plus minus delta r should be equals to the value of a a plus minus delta a and the value of b plus minus delta b just expand this particular term while using distributive law we have a multiplied with these two term delta a multiplied with these two term so a times b plus minus a times delta b or it will be better just make a coefficient or make some particular term common from either two term likewise suppose i am taking r as common from these two term so it will be r 1 plus minus delta r over r is it right yes sir similarly from this particular term take a as common so it will be a 1 plus delta, delta a, a over a. a and similarly b 1 plus minus delta b over b now expand using distributive law so it will be a times b as common one multiplied with one becomes one plus minus delta a over a multiplied by one so it will be then again delta b over b and last delta a over a times delta b over b we have just multiplied this term to this term and this term to this term as a first part similarly for the next part this term to this term and this term to this term using distributive law and obtain this particular relation suppose you are multiplying point 1 and point 2 you would obtain point 02 so if you multiply two small term like point 1 and point 2 the result would be much smaller than these two input similarly we have two small term like delta a over a and delta b over b so their product would be negligibly small so we can neglect this particular term is it fine yes sir okay, okay. now a times b 1 take out delta plus minus as common from both these term so it will be plus minus delta a over a plus delta b over b on comparing from this left hand side and this right hand side there is a coefficient r in lhs part and there is a coefficient a times b in right hand side part so on comparing we can say r is equals to a times b and similarly 
delta r over r would be equated to this particular term. So delta r over r is equals to delta a over a plus delta b over b. This particular term we have learned it as fractional error or relative error. If we have to find error only, so just multiply this particular r to right hand side. So we obtain a relation delta r is equals to delta a over a plus delta b over b times r. Is it fine? Yes, sir. Khalid? Any doubt? No, sir. No doubt. Okay, just write it down. Done, no, yes, sir. sir. Just the last part is there. okay. Done, sir. Okay. Hamza, done? Yes, sir, done. Okay. So we have obtained a relation R is equals to A times B. This would be your true value related to that particular operation. Delta R over R was delta A over A plus delta B over B. This will define relative or fractional error. If we just multiply this particular term by 100, so it means delta R over R times 100 is equals to delta A over A times 100 plus delta B over B times 100. This will define you as percentage error percentage error. And the last part, if you have to calculate delta R only, 
so it will be delta a over a plus delta b over b times r this will be your absolute error or simply error so from this particular multiplication they will ask you either of the four terms to calculate from any given operation okay i'm giving one problem suppose if current is equals to 10 plus minus 0.5 ampere resistance offered is equals to 20 plus minus 0.2 ohm find percentage error in measurement of voltage you must have learned in this relation as voltage is equals to i times r in your class 10 as ohm's law so the relation between current and resistance to obtain voltages just product them or take the product okay Yes, sir. Try to find using the above relations. Here A is I and B is R. So we have to calculate voltage, percentage error in voltage using third equation or third relation, this one. Khalid, yes, do you sir. have any doubt? Uh, no, sir. Hiba, any doubt? No, sir. So, which of them should we take as delta, uh, delta A? I mean, uh, which one should be? Any expression, suppose R is written as these two parts. So the first part is taken as their true value and the second part is taken as their error. Okay, so okay. delta part is the error part. Okay, sir.
Should I solve? Hamza? No, sir, we are doing so. It's almost done. Okay. Sir, done. Tell me your answer. So it is seven one. Seven percent. Seven percent. Khalid? Yeah, I got the same answer. Seven. Okay. Hiba? Yes, I got the same answer. Okay. Let me check. So V is simply product of these two terms. So by using this particular relation, the result would be Delta A over A means 0.5 over 10 times 100 plus Delta B over B, Delta 0.2 divided by 20 into 100. So <clears throat> point plus 10, this will 100 cancel out. So it will be five decimal, which will bring 10, zero, zero cancel out. 2 and 2, 1. So it will be 5 plus 1, 6%. How you all get the same result as 7%? Here it was 20 and it was, it is 0.2. So on just a moving decimal, it will bring 10 to the denominator. 2 and 2 gets cancelled out to bring 1. 0, 0 cancel out with 100. So we're left with one only. So here we obtain five and here is one. So five plus one would be six. Okay, Anza? Yes, sir. You are, all have done same mistake. Okay, for the next part, for the calculation of division part, we have to learn a mathematical tool which is called binomial theorem. So the first part is binomial theorem. Suppose if you have this alphabet, this is called summation or sigma, a Greek alphabet. It defines or it represents as sum of terms. Suppose they will be written as summation n. It means sum of numbers from one to so on to n. So this alphabet represents summation or sum of term or this is also called sigma. Similarly, there is another alphabet. This, this is also called note of exclamation in English language for this. This is defined product of, suppose anywhere written as n factorial. It is written as, or it is pronounced as factorial. Somewhere it may be written as like this L shape. So we may write it as factorial n and this. It means take the product of the whole term from starting to one to that particular term n. So one into two into three, so on to n. Is it correct to everyone? Sir, I have uh, learned like it is n and then n minus one like that. For that, uh, you, if you proceed fact, particular for term for and so it will be n minus 2, n minus 1, and the last part would be n. And if you move towards left hand side, it will be 3, 2, 1. Or you may just reverse this particular relation. Yes, sir. I have learned the reverse number. As multiplication is commutative in nature. Okay? Yes, sir. 
So we have introduced a particular term as factorial. What it means in this particular binomial theorem as if you expand any relation like one plus x raised to the power n, it will be like one plus n times x plus n into n minus one by factorial two times x squared n into n minus one n minus two by factorial three x cubed and so on to the last term. Okay, this is general relation for expanding these type of expand expert expression. So for this particular term, if we look these part, if x is very very small as compared to one, then the higher power of x would give you very small data or small term, which on multiplication with these term would be taken as or neglected. So we simply expand this particular term up to two term only and neglect all the higher term. Okay. Yes, sir. By using the same rule, we have obtained exponential or error in terms of division. Just write it down. And I'm using this particular relation later on. Khalid, do you have any doubt related to this? Sir, what does that double greater than sign mean? Like if X, that example you wrote down. Okay, this one. Yeah. Yes, sir. Here, x means x is very, very small as compared to 1. If they would say oh. x is less than 1, it means just comparable to 1 or slightly less than 1. If there would be x double times less than 1, it means very, very small as compared to 1. Okay? Oh, okay, sir. All are written? Yes, sir. Hiba? Sir, just the last part. Then, sir. Okay. Next part is how to divide or operate division for error. So we have R is equals to A divided by B. Put the value of A, R in this particular expression. So R would be R plus minus delta R. A would be A plus minus delta A divide by b plus minus delta b. Just try to remove some coefficients from this part. So we take r as coefficient. So it would be r plus minus delta r over r. Similarly from the numerator, a 
1 plus minus delta a over a and from denominator as well 1 plus minus delta b over b. Here this is in denominator so it will have exponential 1. If you bring this particular term to the numerator the exponential will get change or a different sign in exponent. So it will be like a over b 1 plus minus delta a over a times 1 plus minus delta b over b and their exponential would be in negative. Is it correct? So can you take one also as common? From which part? From other part? Yes, one sir. is multiplicative factor of each term, so we can't take. Okay. Or it will be same result, or it will be the same result. Okay, now expand this particular relation. Before that, suppose if we have 1x to the power n. So by using binomial expansion, we can write it as 1 plus n times of x. It means the exponent of this particular term would be multiplied with the second term as n times x. Similarly, we have exponent as minus 1 in this particular term. So it will be just multiplied with the second part. Okay? Yes, sir. So we're left with a over b 1 plus minus delta a over a 1. If you multiply it minus sign this particular term, it would be negative positive times delta b over b. It means minus 1 is first multiplied with positive sign, so it will become negative. And minus 1 will be multiplied with this negative sign, so it will be positive. So the sign gets reversed. Now expand this particular relation using distributive law. So it will be a over b. If you multiply it 1 to these both part, so it will be 1 plus minus delta a over a minus plus delta b over b minus plus delta a over a times delta b over b. Is it fine? Yes, sir. I've just multiplied this part to this part, this part to this part using distributive law. Similarly, multiplied this part to this also to obtain this particular expansion. Now we have this as small part and this as also small part and multiplication of two small parts will give you further smaller value. So we neglect this particular term. Now, we have this as plus minus and this have minus plus, but error can always be added. So we take plus as common from either part. So we left with a over b 1 plus minus times delta a over a and here it will be plus delta b over b times this. And left hand side we have 1 plus minus delta r over r. So from this particular result, on comparing, we can say r is equals to a over a and delta r over r is equals to this part. So we can simply say on comparing, r would be a over b. This would be your true part. Delta R over R would be equals to delta A over A plus delta B over B. This would be a relative or fractional error. If you multiply this particular term by 100, you will obtain percentage error. If you bring this particular R to the numerator towards right hand side, so this would be R is equals to delta A over A plus delta B over B times R. This will be error related to that particular measurement. Is it fine? Yes, sir. Khalid, any doubt? No, sir. Okay, just write it down.
so this is for division right yeah I have written no, sir, not yet. Sudden. Khalid Dan. Yes, sir. Done. Epa. Yes, sir. Done. Okay. I'm giving you an example. If distance covered by a body is equal to twenty plus minus point. meter and time for the measurement for this particular lamp is 2 plus minus 0.1 time true value and error for measurement of speed i think you all have no about speed or the formula related to speed written in this data yes sir speed is simply equals to distance, distance divided time. by time taken just use the previous derived part or result and try to obtain this to in the part
end out file solving? No, sir. Should I solve? Hale? Yes, sir. Have we done? Yes, sir. Tell me your answer about true value. R is equal to 10. Good. And the error part? An error is equal to 0 0.75. OK. Hamza? Uh, yes, sir. I received the true value same. But same to error, same. But error part, I didn't get the same. Let me solve. So we have speed. Speed is simply distance over time. So first, true part. True part is 20 and true part is 2. So it will be 20 over 2 means 10 meter per second. Next part for the error part, delta S over S is equals to delta D over D plus delta T over T. We have to calculate delta S only. Delta S would be equals to delta T is D is 0.5 over 20 plus delta T is 0.1 over 2 multiplied by S, which is 10. Just multiply this whole term by 10 individually. So 0.5 into 10 divided by 20 plus 0.1 divided by 2 into 10. So 0 and 0 cancel out. 0.5 divided by 2, it will be 0 0.025 plus. No, no, it will be so point be zero five. Zero point two. Yes. It will be point two five plus point one divided by two into ten. So just multiply this particular part two 
this and this gets cancelled out. So it means 1 over 2 means 0 0.5. 0 0.5 plus 0.25, it would be 0.75. Okay. So you all got the same result? Uh, yes, sir. I made, okay, so we have... calculation in, I made the mistake in the calculation. Okay. Last part. Eba? You got yes, the same sir. result or a different one? Yes, sir. Same? Yes, sir. Okay, then. So we have done multiplication and division. The last part is exponential. Suppose there would be a relation of R with A and B having some exponent. Suppose A raised to the power M and B raised to the power M. So just put these values, R, R plus minus delta R, A is equals to A plus minus delta A to the power M times B plus minus delta B to the power M. Just bring R as common from this part. So it would be R one plus minus delta R over R. If you bring A to the, so it will be one plus minus delta A over A and whole raised to the power M. For the next part, it will be B one plus minus delta B over B whole raised to the power M. If you expand this particular relation, it would be a raised to the power m and 1 plus minus delta a over a to the power m. Similarly, for this particular part, it would be b raised to the power m and 1 plus minus delta b over b to the power m. Likewise, if you have x times y having same power, then on expanding, it will be x raised to the power m and y raised to the power m. Okay? Yes, sir. Now, just by using binomial expansion, if we have 1 plus x raised to the power any exponential, then it will be written as 1 plus m times x. Just multiply this particular exponent to the next part or the second part of the expression. Similarly, a raised to the power m and b raised to the power m taken as common. If you multiply this particular part or bring to the denominator, it will be 1 plus minus m times delta a over a. Similarly, for this part, it will be 1 plus minus n times delta b over b. Is it fine? Yes, sir. Now expand this particular relation using distributive law. So it will be a raised to the power m, b raised to the power m, and it will be 1 plus minus m times delta a over a, plus minus n times delta b over b, plus minus m times n, delta a over a times delta b over b. So we have two small part as in product, so the result would be much smaller than them. So we'll just neglect this. So we're left with a raised to the power m, b raised to the power m, one plus minus taken as common. So it would be m times delta a over a plus n times delta b over b. Just compare with the left hand side as r. 1 plus minus delta r over r. On comparing, r would be equals to a raised to the power n and b raised to the power n, and delta r over r would be this part. Just write it down. I will just break this particular relation on the next page. So, what about the uh, part m into n? Since these two done on product becomes smaller and smaller, so on multiplied with any coefficient would give you the same product or same relation, which is much smaller as compared to either of these two terms. So we just neglect them the whole. 
Yes, Suppose if you have point 0.1 into point 0.2 and we are multiplying with 2 or 3 or any of the number, so it would be 6 into this particular point 0.16. Yes, sir. Okay. So we just neglect that particular whole part. Written? Yes, I have done. Alif, have you done? Yes, sir, done. Huh? Yes, sir. So this particular relation, I'm giving you a problem. Suppose if radius of a sphere is changed by 2%. Find percentage change in surface area and volume.
सरफेस एरिया ऑफ स्फेयर इज फोर बाय आर स्क्वेर एंड वॉल्यूम ऑफ स्फेयर इज फोर बाय थ्री बाय आर क्यू ट्राई टू सॉल्व Okay, just wait. I haven't obtained that particular last relation. So, on comparing these two part, we say R is equals to a raised to the power n, b raised to the power n, and similarly, delta R over R would be equals to m times delta a over a, n times delta b over b. If someone asks you to find percentage here. Then just multiply this left hand side and right hand side by hundred to obtain percentage error. Or if you have to calculate error only, so it will be delta R is equals to m times delta A over A, n times delta B over B, and then multiply it by R. So in this particular question, we have to calculate surface area or percentage change in surface area. And the given is percentage change in radius. So simply apply a is equals to four pi r squared. Four pi is any constant number. Just neglect this. So we can say delta a over a as change in a with respect to a multiplied by a hundred to get percentage change in a. It will be equals to l. R to the power two. Using that particular exponential, the power gets multiplied by, or gets multiplied in the coefficient to that whole power. So it would be two times delta R over R times hundred. There is only one dependency of area with radius only. So it obtain just one result. So it would be two. And the value of this part is two percent, or the radius of the sphere is changing by two percent. It means the error in the measurement of radius is two percent. So just multiply this particular term by two to obtain as four percent. Do you have any doubt, anyone? No sir. No sir. Similarly, just try to find. The percentage error in volume. Just as I have done for area. Yes, sir. Tell me if anyone has solved. 
Yes. Yes, uh, it is. Uh, is it six percent? Okay, good. Eba, have you solved? Khalid? No, sir, I'm doing. Yes, sir. Sir, is it six percent? Okay. Khalid, have you done? Yes, sir, done. Whether it, whether it is six percent or something different? Yes, sir, six percent. Okay, right. Okay, so we have done all different different operation related to that particular area. Next is, next topic is measurement. I'm giving you one more problem. Suppose if P is any quantity related with A, B, C, and D as A raised to the power three, B raised to the power 1, c raised to the power v, and d raised to the power 1. If percentage error in a, b, c, and d are 1%, 3%, 2%, 2%, and 4%, find percentage Error in B. Just try to solve. Do you have any difficulty while solving? Hamza? Yes, I was thinking how to start with it. We have P as a quantity which depends upon four different parameters as A, B, C, and D. So by the rule of exponential, we can say error in P as delta P over P. If you multiply this particular term by 100, it will give you percentage error in P. Yes, Similarly, we have A and exponential is 3. So by the rule of exponential, just multiply the exponential to their coefficient. So it will be delta A over A times 100. Similarly for B, we have 1 as exponential, so 1 multiplied by delta B over B times 100. So we have exponential of C as half square root. So it will be delta C over C times 100. And the last is D having exponential one, delta D over D by 100. Now, we have percentage in A, B, C, D as 1, 3, 2, and 4. So just put the value of this as 1%. This is percentage in B as 3%. 1, 
this is percentage range C as 2% and this is percentage range D as 4%. Okay? Yes, sir. Just put all these values and where we determine our result. Okay, yes, sir. Done. Tell me your answer. 11%. I think you are right. Have you saw it? Eba? No, sir, I'm So it is 11%. Okay, good. So we have three and percentage in A as one. So it will be three into one plus one percentage in B as three plus half percentage in C as two and the last one into percentage in D is four. So two and two gets cancelled out for that with one. Three plus three, six plus one, seven plus four, 11 percent. Okay, Ba? Yes, sir, I got it. Okay, good. So we have done whole segment related to that particular measurement of error. The next topic is how do we measure any quantity? If someone asks you, how do you measure any particular physical quantity? What you can say? Suppose if you have to calculate or measure any length or any measurement of length. So we first define a term which is called unit. For any of the physical quantity, we define a unit or standard of measurement related to that particular quantity. This particular term is called unit. Likewise, for the measurement of length, we define one meter as a standard of measurement. Similarly, for the measurement of mass, we define one kg as standard of measurement. So standard of any measurement is called unit. The unit is simply defined as standard of any measurement. Now, by using this particular unit or taking this as a scale, suppose if you have, or if you have this particular term, pen as a measurement of length as taken as one meter. So we just compare this particular term to that particular physical quantity or length of any segment. Suppose length of this particular table length of this particular breadth or any other term. Likewise, if you are given this particular as a segment which we have to measure, so we first define a standard of measurement related to that particular quantity. Here we have to calculate length of this particular measurement. So we define this particular part as standard of measurement. And by using this, just compare this part on this whole part 
that means how much times this whole segment is related to this particular standard of measurement is. So we put this particular part on this part as one times, two times, three times, four times, and roughly five times. Okay? Yes, sir. So measurement of any physical point A is nothing but first define a unit that is called standard of any measurement related to that particular physical quantity and just compare that particular unit related to that particular physical quantity that how much times that given quantity is in larger proportion or in a smaller proportion. The measurement means comparing of given quantity related to their respective standard of measurement. Standard of measurement that is called unit. That how much times it is in larger proportion or in smaller proportion. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So first part is how we define unit or how we define scale related to the given measurement. So on the basis of amount or proportionality of that particular physical quantity or related to that particular physical quantity, we first define scale. Scale should be not too small, not too large, just it would be comparable to that particular quantity, okay? So first, for the measurement of length, if we define, for the measurement of large distances, let's say, if we have to calculate large distances. So the first define scale for measuring large distance. In this particular section, the first term would be light year. You might have heard about this in your previous class. Have you yes, ever heard sir. this? Yes sir. yes, sir. Can you define it? And the? Uh, a light year is a term that passes, uh, like it passes with the speed of light and which takes a year around a year. Light year is simply a distance traveled by light in one year if it is going through vacuum. So it is just measurement of distance for large distances, just as distance between any two stars, distance between any two heavenly body. Likewise, so light year is defined as the total distance traveled by light in one year if going through vacuum. So one light year is nothing but measurement of distance. So we have distance is equals to product of speed and time. So distance is light year, one L Y. Speed of light in vacuum would be three into 10 to the power A meter per second. And time for one year would be 365.25 days in one year. Just convert day into hour, it would be 24 hour. Convert R into minute, it would be 60 minutes. Convert minute into second, it would be 60 seconds. On multiplying this whole term, you would obtain 9.46 into 10 to the power 15 meter. This will be required for taken as one light year. Okay, Halit. Yes, sir. Just write it down.
can simply say it as scale for measuring large distances. Have you all written? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So first was light here. The next term is astronomical unit or a u. In our earlier classes, we have learned in gravitation that all planets revolve around the sun. And the path described or inscribed by that particular planet would be circular in shape. But later on, there was a scientist called Kepler who defined that the orbit of any planet around the sun would be elliptical in shape. What do you mean by elliptical? somehow like oval, like this, in which sun lies at one of its center at this point, and planet revolve in this particular orbit. Suppose at this point, So there will be two different or different different distances from the sun at different points. So there will be seasonal change on that particular planet related to the distance. If it is close to the sun, that will be summer, this portion, which is facing towards sun. And if it is very far at this particular point, then it will be winter on that particular surface facing towards sun or away. Okay. There is some more factor related to that particular seasonal change which we will define in our gravitation chapter. Okay. At this particular instant, if we define distance between these two parts, so it will be like this, this, or maybe this, this, and some. This part. So we have different values at different positions of planet. So if we take the average of these all distances, defining between Earth and Sun, this particular average distance is called astronomical mean. Astronomical mean is nothing but the average distance between Earth and Sun related to its all different different positions. And the orbit of all planets and the sun would be elliptical in shape, given by Kepler's. We shall learn or detail in our gravitation chapter. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So astronomical unit is nothing but the average distance between earth and the sun and this equals to one astronomical equals to 1.496 into 10 to the power 11 meter or approximately it is 1.5 into 10 to the power 11 meter or i can say 150 million kilometers
just try to come. Done, sir. Done, sir. Khalid, have you written? Yes, sir. There is one last measurement that is the scale of measuring large distance, which is called parsec. Find parsec, you first find a term which is called parallax method. First, let me define what is parallax or what I mean by parallax. Suppose we have learned a chapter in our class 10, human eye and colorful world. There was a topic or there is a question, why we have two eyes, not just one? so that we can see equally equally on either side or maybe some other reason with one eye person can maximum see to 150 degree. so this would be your field of vision with just one eye by adding the second one, you will be able to see the whole one, one kit. So it means from both eyes, the field of vision gets expanded by 30 degrees. This is your first reason. There is one more interesting reason. If you see any object by closing just one eye, you can't define the exact position of that particular object. Suppose I'm looking this particular object from this particular point. This is my right eye and this is my left eye. If I close one of my eye, suppose my right eye, and start viewing this particular object from left eye, it will appear slightly far from its actual point, like at this point. And similarly, if I close my left eye and start viewing this particular object from right, it will be slightly far at this point. So this object will appear at this point while closing left eye and this will object this object will appear at this point while closing the right one it means we can't define the exact position by keeping white one eye means closed means both eyes would define the exact position of the particular object correctly okay yes sir so if you want to see this particular object by closing one eye at one time, the object gets shifted by this particular amount. This method or this part is called parallax. How we define this particular measurement? Suppose the angle between them would be theta. 
so it will also be theta angle vertically opposed angle the length or the distance between two eyes suppose this is called as basis distance of object from either eye would be d so by knowing any of the two value the third value can be easily calculated so this is just indirect way of measuring any distances by just saying from either of the distance so as we have learned earlier in our plane angle part while defining the supplementary unit we have just defined let's say we have r and angle inscribing at that particular center as theta so this is called length of r and this is your radius radius it is just similar to like this Hamza, yes, sir. whether they are similar? Yes, sir. Somewhat similar. So we had defined at that time theta is equals to length of r by radius if theta is measured in radian. So by this way, we can define here theta would be equals to length of r, which is called as basis, divide the distance d. So by knowing any of the two values, the third value can be easily calculated. Okay, so this is method of calculating indirect measurement of distance, and this method is called parallax method. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just write it down. I'm giving some situation related to this particular term. Khalid, any doubt? All have written? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Alip? Sir. I'm Done. doing some situation related to this particular topic. The first one is, we are on surface of Earth. And the distance of this point object which is very far at this particular point so to define the exact position or to define this particular as dependency of angle for this part we define or take a reference point this in star so this star is taken as a reference point so from that Take the line or draw a line. Let's say it, this is your initial reference. Start with this particular object, keeping this as initial reference. So the angle between these two lines would define you the first part or the first angle. Now move somehow distance from this part to this part. The start would appear just above at this point as the surface of earth is very small as compared to distance between star and this particular planet earth so if we move from this point to this point the star at this point would remain visible or taken or behave as 
stationary to this point as well. So if we take another reference related to the same point, and so we'll measure another angle. So first angle was this, let's say it is called phi one. The second angle completed as this, let's say phi two. If we draw a line in between them like this, so this all three would be parallel to each other. So by using the concept of alternate interior angle, we can define this angle as phi one, this angle as phi two. So total angle inscribed in this building would be theta. Is it fine? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so by calculating the distance of this particular point object, we have just defined or taken this particular star as a reference point to define first part and the next, the object, this part, and define two different lines to find this angle in between them. We solve this whole segment by using any telescope. So in telescope, they're just rotating, there will be change in angle, and we have to calculate the angle, how much time it gets shifted. So for that part, we first define any reference. So we have taken this particular star as the reference, because while moving from any one point to any other point on the surface of Earth, this particular star would appear as a stationary to its own position. So if it, it will be taken as the same reference to this point as well to define inclination of the object. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, the distance between two points would be D. And distance between these two points, let's say, basis for B. Is it quite similar with the previous one? So from this, we can define theta is equals to length of R by distance. So by knowing any of the two values, we can be able to calculate the third one. This is your first part of parallax or using parallax. There is one more. Suppose there is a heavenly body, which is closer to the surface of Earth, and we have to calculate the diametrical end of this particular object. Suppose one diametrical end is this part, and the other diametrical end part is this. And we are measuring this whole part from single point on the surface of Earth, let's say from this point. So in this particular measurement, I have first aligned telescope to one side of the surface. Let's say this is your reference or initial point and turn the telescope towards the next part or the next diametrical end to define the inclination between these two parts as theta. So we have just seen the either diametrical end of this particular object. So this will be your linear diameter of the object. Linear diameter. And this linear diameter substance an angle theta at this particular point. So this is called angular diameter. And the distance between them would be D and D. So from this, we can conclude theta or angular diameter is equals to length of arc, that means linear diameter, divided by distance. So by knowing any of the two values, we can be able to calculate the third unknown part. 
So by parallax, we can easily calculate by these two different pay related to that particular measure. Is it clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, just write it down and I will give you some questions related to this. You may say this particular as a reference line. All of written? Yes, sir. Khaled? Yes, sir. Done. Okay. As we have learned in our fundamental part that we can measure angle in two different units. One is in degree measurement and the other is in radian measurement. So first one is degree measurement and the next one is a radian measurement and there was a conversion relation just multiply degree by pi by 180 to convert it into radian measurement. There is some more term related to this particular part. Likewise for the measurement of time we have one hour is equal to 60 minutes and one minute is equal to 60 seconds. Similarly, for the measurement of degree, one degree is equal to 60 minute. This is minute and one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So there's a smaller division of that particular degree in minute and second. So how to convert this particular term into radian? So just convert them into degree and multiply it by pi by 180. I'm using direct relation or direct calculation or direct value. One degree would be equals to 1.72 into 10 to the power minus two radian. Similarly, one minute is equals to 2.91 into 10 to the power minus 4 radian and 1 second is equals to 4.85 into 10 to the power minus 6 radian. Just memorize these three terms to convert directly from degree into radian. Okay? I'm giving yes, you sir. 
an example related to this or the previous section that is parallax metal. Suppose if the angular diameter of sun as measured from earth is 1920 seconds. Find its linear diameter and we know the distance between earth and sun that is capital D is 1.5 into 10 to the power 11 meter. So we have distance between earth and sun, we have angular diameter, we have to calculate linear diameter. So we have derived a relation to this. Okay. Angular diameter means theta is equal to linear diameter means L upon distance. So we have angular diameter, we have distance, so we have to calculate linear diameter. By using this, we can say linear diameter linear diameter would be equals to distance times angular diameter. Is it correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so we have given 1920 second as angular diameter. So first, we'll have to calculate this particular term in terms of radian measurement. So we have a direct relation to convert second into radio. Just multiply that particular term 1920 with 4.85 into the power minus six. And put this particular term in this equation to obtain linear diameter. Okay, Khaled? Eba in doubt? No, sir. Just try to solve. Okay, sir. Have we run? Khalid? Uh, yes, sir. Have you calculated? No, not yet, sir. I'm having problem with calculation. Okay, okay.
just put the value of capital D as 1.5 into 10 to the power 11. Angular diameter is 1920 seconds. Just multiply it with by 4.85 into 10 to the power 6. Just multiply the whole term. Sir, can you like tell the answer of this question? It will be around 1.4 into 10 to the power 11 plus 6, 17 plus 4, 21. No, no. This is minus 6. So it will be 11 minus 6 is 5. Plus four nine meter. I have calculated using calculator. So why have you taken plus four? Just multiply uh, 1.5, 1920, and 4.35 was like 1, 3, 9, 4, 5. So just bring this particular decimal to this part. So there will be four different digits. So just add this. Okay, sir. Try to solve on its own. Okay, so we have done first part. I'm giving you another problem related to the second one. Should we proceed? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. There is one another question. If moon is view from diametrical end of earth the inclination between them is one degree 54 minute. Find distance of moon from Earth. The radius of Earth is 6.4 into 10 to the power 6 meter. In this problem, we have Earth like this and we have seen that particular moon from two diametrical endpoint of earth like from this point it is somehow at this point and from this point at this so inclination between these two lines this is one degree and 54 minutes so just convert this particular term into same, same unit. So convert this degree into minute and add them. So one degree is equals to 60 minute plus 54 minute. So it will give you 114 minute. So we have angle in terms of minute. Just multiply it with, with 2.91 10 to the power minus 4 to convert it to radian. Now, Radius of Earth is 6.4 in 10 to the power 6. So the total distance between these two endpoints would be diameter, that is twice of radius of Earth. Okay? Yes, sir. So this is distance, distance. This is your basis of calculation. So basis would be two times of radius of Earth. 
it means 1.28 into 10 to the power 7 meter. Just apply the formula. Theta is equals to length of r over distance. So we have to calculate distance is equals to b over theta. On just putting all the values, you will obtain the required. Okay, Khalid. So do we have to apply one fourteen minutes for theta? What you have said? Do we have to apply one hundred fourteen minutes for theta? Yeah. Here we have one degree and fifty four minutes. These are two different units. So just convert them into single unit. So I have converted this particular degree into minute and add this to this part. So the total angle substantive would be 114 minute. So just multiply it by 2.91 to convert it into radian. Okay. Hiba, okay, any doubt? With what we have to multiply it as we have obtained a relation that one minute is equal to this particular part. So, to convert minute into radian, as we have theta and this particular point in terms of minute, so just multiply this particular term with 2.91 10 to the power minus 4 to convert theta in terms of radian. Okay. Okay, sir. Khaled, is it clear? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, by the way, theta will be that 114 minute, right? Yeah. Okay, sir. So just convert it into radian. By just multiplying by 2.91 to the power minus 4. Sir, is the answer 3.8 into 10 raised to 11 meter? I think it is right. Hamza, have you solved? No, sir, not These bases, which is equals to 1.28, 10 to the power 7 meter, divided by theta, which is 114 into 2.91 into 10 to the power minus 6. Ten to the power minus 4, right? Minus 4, minus 4. Okay. So it would be 
1.28 divided by 1 plus multiplying 114 with 2.91, you adopt the 331.74 into 10 to the power 7 and 4, it would be 11. Okay. On just dividing this particular part, you will obtain 0 0.003857, I think. So, 58. Okay, 58 into 10 to the power 11. So, bring this particular decimal to this part, decrease the exponential by 3 fifth. So, it will be 3.8. 6 into 10 to the power 8 meter. Okay, Khaled? Oh, uh, yes, sir. So, this will be your final result the distance between Earth and Moon. Hiba, any doubt? No, sir. Okay, so we have done this whole chapter. There is just one topic left behind, which is the parallactic second or parsec, which will continue in our next class. And we'll start the next topic that is physical world, which we have left earlier. And then from there, I will teach you mathematical physics, which we'll use in the whole course of physics of class 11th or 12th. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, any doubt from today's class? No, sir. No, sir. Okay, so just try to solve all the problems which we have done in our today's class on its own. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay, then. Good night. Bye, sir. Bye-bye. Allah, sir. Okay, love.